welcome back to Design Vendel's YouTube channel. If you guys are new here, my name is Crystal, and today we are going to do a versus. So I'm just simply talking about and going over the differences of the Cricut Easy Press 2 along with the Cricut Easy Press 3. And my phone screens, just bear with me, they're going to try to wake up and sleep the whole time. So what I want to show you is the app versus the, um, you can go to the heat guide for the Cricut Easy Press 2. There is actually a web page for that. It's not an app, but I actually saved this to my front home screen of my phone. If that's something that you guys want to see for your Cricut Easy Press 2 is how to save the Cricut heat guide. Um, that's actually a web page, like I said, to the front of your phone. Definitely comment down below and we will definitely do a tutorial on that. Just simply uh, comment heat guide and that way we know what you guys are referring to so let's go ahead and get started the very first thing you're going to notice is the color so with the Cricut easy press 2 I believe it comes in three different colors that I know of. I do believe they have a couple special editions um, you know that are gold and things like that but basic the basic colors are like raspberry this mint and um, I want to say the blue so with the Cricut easy press 3 it's only available in this loop. So as you guys may notice too, I'm going to go ahead and turn these off for just a second. So that way we're not having to worry about those and I'll get them out of the way and we'll come back to those in a bit. So that way there's no distractions. Let's go ahead and go over the face of it. We have the power buttons the same. For the heat here, you have a thermometer and over here we have three dash lines. The clock changed just a little bit. So they got rid of the little knob on top. What they basically did was just kind of sleeked it up a little bit, made it a little bit more modern. So they got rid of the little Cricut guy that had the antennas. I am a fan of getting rid of that. I think this just looks a lot more modern and sleek compared to, um, I never was a huge, huge fan of this. I definitely think they've outgrown that. That's more, in my opinion, I just feel like it's a little bit um, definitely aged, if you will, um, where I think this is definitely more adultish, more modern stuff like that. So I definitely think it was a good thing. So they've gotten rid of that and they got the play button. They did that exact same thing with the Cricut um, Explorer models when they upgraded for the two. The, th the Cricut Explorer 3 and Maker have this little play button instead of those. So those are the things they've changed, made them look more modern and sleek. Um, and then down here, the same thing, their new logo that looks like this, they've changed that as well. Um, as for the housing of it, I think everything there looks the same. I think the cords are the same. Um, the as for the base part of this, this one is a, it's like a pink, if you will. I'm trying to think like rose gold where this one is blue. So this one has a blue tinge to it. Um, they still have that same gray around. And then when it comes to the base, I believe they're identical, but now it shows you to put this back. It has a little image there to, to, to show you that's where you press put this here. Or before there was none, it says return device to the base. So they changed where it had the wording here. I'll flip this in the correct direction. On this one, they said return device to the base, where this one here, it shows an image. So they did change that a little bit. And other than that, I think everything is identical on those. So that's what you have with that. So let's go ahead and power these guys up here just so we can see that. So whenever you turn them on, I had just used this one to sublimate. So you're going to notice it's already at a higher temp. I'm not even going to compare the heat. Now, if y'all want to see a tutorial, we can do a head to head and we can, you know, sublimate some things and put them side by side just to see who performs better. So if y'all want to see some stuff like that, some comparisons, putting them head to head to see if there's any sort of differences there, um, definitely let me know. Like I said, this is not going faster. It's just I just got done uh, sublimating. So you're going to notice right away with the numbers here that your S for your seconds, so you have Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit, and then you have your S for seconds. And then over here you have Bluetooth. So this is to show you that we've already enabled the Bluetooth and it's on and working. So this one is Bluetooth where this one is not. Um, I wonder on the back side too, this one does still have the USB um, connections just like the first one. So the new one does have that for any sort of updates and things, which now this one is USB. I don't think this one obviously runs by USB and that's why they couldn't just upgrade that into this model. So um, this one actually has that Bluetooth mechanism built inside of it. So that's something that's different. So whenever it comes to it, both of them you can still use just like so. So I can come in here, I can hit the temp just like I did before with the first one and change it by hitting that up or down plus, right? And then whenever it comes to your time, same thing, you're gonna click your little time here and click the up. So you can still, do everything you did with this one without using your phone. All you initially, if you have no intentions of using your phone, 
Um, so say for somebody that may be older, that's not um, phone savvy, you do not have to use the phone with us. You can still do it and purchase the um, Cricut Easy Press 3 without having to feel like you have to use that app. You do have to initiate it with, with your phone. You do have to do that. But after the fact, you don't have to do it. Now, with this one compared to this one, you definitely do have the um the app to where we can control it now like i said you do have an online website i'll have it down link down below cricket has always had whenever they came up with their first the first model of the cricket easy press they may have actually done it on the second so don't quote me on that they created a heat guide so if you actually go to cricket.com you can go to a heat guide we'll have a link below like i said it's cricket heat guide and you're going to come to a screen like this now like i said you can save this to the home screen of your phone so that way it looks like an app and you can click it and that's what i've done and the way that this heat guide has always worked i've showed it in previous tutorials you can change so that for example this is the first model you can see that color there and if you go right or left you should be able to change it. So say, for example, I can choose the settings for the Cricut Easy Press Mini. I can choose the settings. I'm trying to get it to go over. It's being a little bit slow today. Let me go ahead and get it to go this way. Some of more of them are this way. So you can do the Cricut Easy Press 2. And then I believe you can even do the Mug Press in here. I'm going to go ahead and go over one more. The first one is no longer showing it. It used to show the Cricut Mug Press. So there it is. Sorry. So it shows the Cricut Mug Press as well. Now, I don't know if they're going to do away with this because they have the Cricut app and that's going to replace. So say, for example, because they have built this, at the end of the day, they will more than likely, once these are sold out, the Cricut Easy Press 2, they will get rid of that model and they'll only stick with these. Because like I said, at the end of the day, you can still run this manually and you don't have to run it by the phone. So I don't know if this heat guide will stay here for you guys that are only going to stay with the Cricut Easy Press 2. I would assume it would because they've always, um, say, for example, if you have the Cricut Explorer 2, you can still turn your knob um, to that custom dial and all those things, right? So you have your little heat guide here, which allows you to go in and choose your material. So let's go back over here and say we have the Cricut Easy Press 2. We can get back there. Like I said, it's a little bit finicky. Um, it never was before. It was a little bit um, laggy, but not as bad as it recently has been. So what you can do from here, once you choose your press, you're going to scroll down to your materials and you would choose, say, for example, everyday iron on. And then we would go down to our base material, 100% cotton. And then I would tell it the Cricut Easy Press Mat. Now, they used to have where you could choose between the Cricut Easy Press Mat and the um, a towel. But they took away the towel and you could only choose the Cricut Easy Press Mat now. And then you would hit apply. So from here, it's going to tell you to set your Cricut Easy Press at 315 for 30 seconds. If you need Celsius, you can change it so you can see that there. And then it's going to run through supplies, prep, application, etc. So this is going to tell you to do the um, flip it and press for 15 seconds on the back and all of that. But what you would have to do once it gave you this information, you would come over here, you would click on your temp, and we would hold this down. If you hold it down, you can move it a lot quicker, um, or you can click on it like so. Hit your time, and then we're going to change it. We're going to toggle that down to the 30 seconds. All right, and then that would preheat itself. Now we would have to, so say for example, this is gonna tell me to preheat the t-shirt for, um, let's just say that it said to preheat the t-shirt for five seconds. I would have to press go and stop it at the, um, you know, say for example, 25 seconds, just like so. Or I would initially set it at five seconds. Whereas this one is gonna be a little bit more in depth and I'll get to that. So we would have that. And then once we were done with that, we would have to then do 15 seconds on the back side of the t-shirt. So when we hit go once again, I would stop it at the 15 second mark and then um, you'd be good to go. So everything is manual, but now keep in mind, like I said, with a Cricut Easy Press 2, you can use a heat guide still with your phone and you can save it to the front screen of your phone. I do believe it has something to do, I'm trying to remember exactly in the moment. I think we're gonna click on this one here. And you can, so let me actually show you guys right now. I'm going to do it today. So if you guys want to say, I am using the iPhone. If I wanted to save this to my phone, what I would do is I would click on the arrow, the square with the arrow. You're going to click on this, and then you're going to scroll down to where it says add to home screen. See where it says add to home screen? When you do that, it's going to look like an app on your phone. So it's really, really neat. And then you could just open it each time. That's how I've always had it. So um, there's that one. 
Now with this one, it does go up to that 400 degrees as well. So you guys can sublimate with this one. You can do all of your heat transfer vinyl projects as well as your sublimation, your infusible ink and all of the things. Now this guy is gonna do the exact same things this one can, except for you can run it with your phone. So whenever you come to the app for this one, this one's called the heat guide. It's gonna open up like this once you've officially set it up. Now it's only gonna show the Cricut Easy Press uh, 3, nine by nine, because that's the only one I have set up right now. So as soon as I set up my hat press, I'm gonna be able to toggle between the nine by nine and the hat press. Now, if you're gonna have the auto press, you're going to have the nine by nine, you're going to have the 10 by 12, you're going to be able to toggle by all of those. Now, if you only have the nine by nine, you're only going to see the nine by nine. So whatever machine you're using, you can toggle there. Now, and it may even, I'm going to have, when I have this off, but I have the hat press on, I'm going to assume, which I'll get into that later once I connect it, it would maybe just pop up the hat press right away. So from here to start our project and have the heat guide, what we're going to do is you're going to go to start new project. And then from here, it's going to be the same similar method. So where it says transfer material, you're going to hit select. You're going to choose. So we're going to choose everyday iron on. And then from here, we're going to choose 100% cotton. Now, this one says work surface. I don't have to choose Cricut Easy Press mat like the other one did. This one's already ready. All we have to do is hit next. So this one's going to tell us it's 315. We need to preheat for five seconds. It's going to, um, you know, press for 30 seconds and all of that stuff. So you can click for detailed instructions. This is going to tell you what you need. And then you're going to set, say send a setting. So this is not going to send this information to your phone until you hit send. So send settings to the easy press. You can see that Bluetooth. And now it has sent it. So it's telling it to put it at 400 degrees. And now you notice that my timer changed to five seconds. So where this one, I immediately set it to 30 seconds. That's my press. And I've been just doing the, um, the five seconds. So you could definitely do your five seconds too, just like this did. Now, as soon as you pressed it, so if I hit the play button, it's going to tell me on my phone how many seconds, just like this, it's going to be. Now what's going to happen is you're going to, it's going to tell us to press the t-shirt for 30 seconds. So now automatically it has changed here for 30 seconds. So we are going to be able to just go ahead and pick it back up. We're going to hit the go button. So once again, we hit that go button. It's going to roll all the way through here. I'm going to see if I cancel this out, if it'll go ahead and change it for me. It shows that I stopped. I can continue through, I guess. Maybe, no, I think it's going to, I think it's going to, it started over. I seen this little halfway mark here and I thought maybe it went halfway. So I'm going to go ahead and hit skip. Now, if you had pressed all the way through, it would have moved on to 15 seconds. So you see that here. It started at five seconds, 30 seconds, 15 seconds. So it did all of that for us. So I did not have to, um, to do that. Now, if I needed to go backwards and I messed up and I hit go and I stopped it, I can hit the back button and go back to the 30 seconds. If I need to go back to the five seconds or I'm starting a next t-shirt, I can start over again. And then if I need to skip the five seconds, go straight to the 30, you see how it's toggling in between. Now, say for example, I want to set my own settings. You can do that as well. And so we have tutorials showing you guys how to um, hack this and use it with your uh, with your layering. So if you're layering HTV, we can do it a two, two second tack down and use the, um, the warm up to appear for that. And I'll, you guys can check that video out. We'll have it linked above or down below. So we are going to go ahead, go back to the very beginning right here where it says send, uh, start a new project. So if you actually scroll down a little bit more, we can actually go to, see where it says set custom time and temp. We can click on that. From here, you can tell it exactly what you want it to be. So say, for example, I was doing sublimation at 400 degrees and I wanted to set it at that 60 seconds. I would actually come over here and choose one minute. So it's one 60 seconds, and then I can come down here. So for my preheat blank, I can preheat it and change it. So say, for example, I need it to preheat for 15 seconds instead of five or 20 seconds, I can do that as well. And then you can toggle on the flip. So if I was doing heat transfer vinyl and I'm using the Cricut Press, I would need to flip it so I can toggle that on as well. And then I would say, send to the press, it's gonna send it again. And now this is my custom settings. So it'll go through each one of these as well. So that is your differences. So basically at the end of the day, you're going to be able to press the same things, sublimation, infusible ink, heat transfer vinyl, exactly the same, except for whenever it comes to controlling your, um, 
your time and temp, you can now do it from your phone using the app or also you can, um, hold on one second, cut it out. I wanted to think of something here. I don't know if it's because I had this on longer, but I'm noticing this guy's warmer than this one. Not only just using the phone, I love the fact that it's toggling itself. So with the phone, it's toggling itself from that five seconds, 30 seconds, 15 seconds. And I can play that back and forth, back and forth instead of hitting this and going boom, 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 hitting this again. So you could definitely do that here if you wanted to. When you first start out your project, you can come in here and you can say, okay, we're going to preheat our shirt for 15 seconds. Once you're done with it, you've preheated, you're going to hit your time again. You're going to change this to 30 seconds. So you can still accomplish the exact same things that this is doing, except for um, you're going to, um, it's just going to be a whole lot faster. So this is going to save time. So if you have a small business, time is money. This is going to be quick, quick, quick. So I really do love that. Um, and like I said, if I don't want to whip out my phone and I'm doing a quick project, I can do it by myself. I can just go ahead and turn it on and off by myself. Now, one thing that I am noticing is that this press here, the outside material is definitely hot. So here it's it's definitely hot to the touch, but this one, it's not hot to where it's burning me, but it is warm. So I'm not too sure the difference on this one here, but all of this here is staying cool to the touch. Absolutely cool. This one here has some heat to it. So I'm not too sure um, if it's because I actually have been running this one. So I don't want to judge it just yet, but it is something to keep in mind. I have been running this one now for probably a good hour or so between um, HTV and sublimation and all of those things. So I have been running it for quite some time, but I would still say this guy is at 400 degrees. They're both at 400 degrees. So I would say, but this is really, really cool. This one is definitely warm. I wouldn't want to just, it's not burning me per se, but it's definitely warm. So I definitely want to point that out for you guys as well. This piece, this whole piece right here is warm as well, where this all is staying cold to the touch. So I definitely want to point that out. But once again, I have been running this guy for over an hour. So maybe once this guy was on for an hour, it would be the same. But I definitely wanted to point it out. Now, I hope you guys find this helpful for somebody that may be trying to determine whether they should upgrade. I personally think if you already have the Cricut Easy Press 2, I personally would not upgrade unless I was going to get pretty close um, my money back selling this to somebody else so I could upgrade to have those features. But honestly, I don't think that you should really technically have to upgrade per se. But if you were definitely just coming into the market, I would highly recommend going straight to the Easy Press 3 models because eventually, once again, these should just be done in one because you can see even their logos change. Anything that has the old logo, they're pretty much going to end up wiping out. So I hope you guys have found this helpful. If you did, please hit the like button down below and subscribe. And we'll see you guys on the next one.